separation of these principles from one another and what they do is explained. As I said, that is not today's talk. But what is this called? We just read from the voice. Where is the voice? We just read from the voice uh, the conditions that we go through. And I'm going to remove this after showing it to you. She tells us on page six the levels of consciousness we go through. Okay? So we have waking consciousness, we have dream consciousness, we have sleep consciousness, then we know we go into deep sleep, sleep, and then we have Turiya, which is beyond this state. Deep asleep, uh, and she says this is the highest spiritual consciousness that we have. As you know, there must be others in between because she doesn't give all of it. So we put that there. <coughs> so when we ask the question, why do we sleep? Why should the body need rest? Why do we uh, uh, shut down and then go to sleep at night? Well, we, from the other list that we put um, on the board, we had Jiva of life principle. It's everywhere, all around us, and as soon as we wake up, we're absorbing it. All these... Um, influences that come into the body has to be absorbed and assimilated. So when we have received a lot of energy, life into us, the body cannot absorb it after a certain time. So it has to go to sleep to assimilate what it, it has gathered into it. So that is what is asleep. Why do the babies sleep? They don't do anything. They don't exert their limbs. Why should they get tired? because the body of a baby tires easier. It is not able to uh, deal with the life principle. It hasn't learned to do it fast yet. It's a small, so it sleeps a lot in order to uh, assimilate and then wakes up to absorb some more. What happens when we go to sleep? What are dreams? What uh, happens to us? Well, HP has an article where she explains how the brain is the collector of all of the impressions in the body. So it is the communicating link of the soul with the body. And at night, when it, the body is falling asleep, different parts of the brain go to sleep. And we have to remember that. This is not a just like lump process. Different parts of the brain go to sleep. So what do we have? We have the frontal cerebrum in the front, cerebellum in the back. The cerebrum is the one that uh, collects and um, processes. It, uh, uh, it deals with the daily world. Okay? It's the uh, part that is active during the, during the day. What happens at night? The back part of the brain, the cerebellum, takes over. She, uh, HTV in that article tells us that the cerebellum is active at all times, but the threshold of its activity is very low during the day, so it is not felt at all. What does that part, by the way, do? It is in charge of all of the automatic functions of the body. We, we breathe correctly. Do you pay any attention to your breathing, or is it an automatic function? At one time, we paid attention to it, but right now it is an automatic function. So cerebellum then does all of the automatic uh, activity of the day. So as the brain is going uh, to sleep in parts, what is it doing? It is releasing the eye consciousness of the body. So um, now I'm going um, to take all of it off again. 
I'm sure the, the jiva here, I think that's important to remember. This is the life principle that goes in a full time. So, different parts of the brain is going to, s going to sleep, and the eye consciousness is being released. Slowly it is being released. It is important to understand what's going on in our body in order to understand those uh, states that we go through every night. And um, she tells us that this eye consciousness, what is this eye consciousness, by the way, called? We have an I am I consciousness, which is our higher consciousness, correct? But the I consciousness is I am uh, my name, body and soul, we, the thing that I identify with, it's my personality. Okay? The I am I is the higher consciousness. This is the individuality. And this is the personality. Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so, so forth. Now, that self-consciousness, that intelligence who speaks of himself as I, is a distinct entity. It is a ray from the one sun, but nevertheless, it has a distinct existence. I who think with the help of my mind, I who feel through the help of my emotions, I who sense with and through the help of my senses and sense organs. I'm a distinct entity. This, man, this consciousness then manifests different inherent properties of itself at different times. This consciousness in reference to the body is called the waking consciousness. So we're all awake, are we not? You're listening to what I'm saying and you're cognizing it and you're putting it to the test whether it is reasonable, it is not reasonable, acceptable, or otherwise. So your consciousness is awake and you're doing functions with it, whether you're aware of it or not. So, this consciousness sometimes enters into brown study. While you're awake, your mind is not really processing anything. You're kind of stuck on one thing and you're thinking about it. And sometimes you sit in the fryer, in front of the fire, and you're dreaming. You're fun seeing things, and you're not really using the processes of your mind. Now, in theosophy, the mind is the controller of the brain. Of the brain. So the mind is in charge of the brain. This mind has dual capacity. One, the lower mind, what she calls lower mind, our intellectual mind that acts and works with the personality and the I am I consciousness which is the higher self, the higher consciousness, higher spiritual consciousness. So when this body goes to sleep then it is passing into waking dreaminess. It's not a shut down process. You, you know that you're going through it. So, what is a sleep? It is a condition of the body. And the condition, the I, the thinking, analyzing, feeling, is going to go to sleep with it. In our words, the mind is uh, controlling the um, consciousness and it is going to release itself from the bondage of the brain is what that really amounts to saying. So what are then dreams? When we are going through this process, what's happening? The body is going to sleep because the brain is going to sleep in parts and slowly it releases the eye consciousness. What happens to the eye consciousness? Where is it going? Where does it have to go? It goes through these phases from waking to dreaming to a sleep to a sleepless dream. So it is going through these levels of consciousness 
but it is also changing the sheaths. So in dream state, what sheath is it occupying? The astral body. The electromagnetic body is the connecting list. What kind of dreams then do we have? This student came up with seven. Seven states. Okay. One. Uh, should I put these there? This is a lot. <laughs> Automatic activity of the brain. One is automatic activity of brain. The brain retains impressions that it is uh, going through with its activity during the day, and while it is going to sleep, it repeats those. So this is the automatic activity of the brain. I would just say automatic activity. And then we have the automatic activity of the brain that affects the eye consciousness because it is working together and it affects the eye consciousness. So then this is one, two, this affecting the eye consciousness. Three, the activity of the eye consciousness on the brain. That's the third. And most of our dreams are those three. And sometimes they're mixed. And what do we say in the morning when we wake up? I can't make ends and tails of my dream. I do not understand what it means because it gets mixed up. Then we have the activity of the ego, which affects the eye consciousness mm -hmm. only. So as we are going to sleep, and the eye consciousness is being released, it's turning inward. It's going inward, deeper and deeper. Where does it go? It goes to the ego consciousness and it learns from its ego consciousness. So the ego then affects the eye consciousness. I'm just going to put ego and you can fill in the other stuff. And sometimes, through the eye consciousness, it touches the brain. What does that mean? It, in other words, the impressions are conveyed to the brain, <coughs> and the brain retains it. How does it retain it? in symbols. The brain then weaves brain symbols and it retains that information that is passed down to it through the eye consciousness by the ego. So, five, I will just put symbols. <coughs> And beyond that, what happens? We become one with the ego consciousness. However brief a period it is, it's extremely important that unison takes place every night in beyond deep sleep. <coughs> and that's the yoga state. That unison. Can we retain? Uh, I have it. Thank you. I have it. It's right there. I forgot it actually. <coughs> that unison then does take place. And the, the literature then, this a seventh kind, and this is for um, harbingers. It says there are harbingers.
endured. All good news that come to individuals. And they're talking about the Nirmanakayas and all those positive influences through that brotherhood that we have that comes to us and it is for the purpose of blessing the world that they relay.